Back to Brexit, the pound is falling after the Prime Minister's office says the UK won't be asking the EU for a long delay to Brexit. Now, while it suggests no deal risks could return in the summer, pound traders have generally seemed more upbeat recently. In fact, sterling is up over 3.5% this year. Meanwhile, the Bank of England is likely to hold rates tomorrow, but ING and RBC say a long extension could be enough for the central bank to actually increase rates in August. Well, joining us now, Peter Dixon, he's Commerce Bank Global Equities Economist and Frédéric Ducrozet, he's picked at Asset Management Senior Economist. So, Frédéric, so nice to finally meet you actually in person. I'll come to you on some of the pound calls in a second. But when you look um, overall, uh, you know, Peter, about, about the, the concern about Brexit, we're nine days away from, from that Mar you know, April 29th deadline, and it's just more confusing. What does it mean for, for assets? Um, well, at the moment, I mean, the market has been extraordinarily relaxed. I mean, volatility has dipped to you know, month-long lows. Um, investors, I think, are they still have short positions in sterling, obviously. But at the moment, I think the market still thinks that for some reason, for some strange reason, that the government will put it out the fire at the last minute and we'll avoid the hard Brexit. And that still remains our base case as well, because Parliament's already said no hard Brexit. But clearly the risks are rising. And if we get a surprise, then you know, all bets are off. OK, so what does it mean for, for A, the UK economy, B, pound and three, the BOE? Well, uh, when you talk to people here in London, there's a lot of fatigue. I think that's uh, something to take into account. There's a lot of uncertainty, of course, about the uh, next uh, events uh, next week. But beyond that, uh, this is going to be with us for a very long time. I was about to say forever. Uh, there is a, a deadline with services. Negotiation will be even more difficult on this uh, area. I think the extension will be, uh, there will be another one after another one. And for the economy in particular, this means that the potential growth is likely to remain lower for longer. Peter, I want to talk to you a little bit about the pound. We heard from Viraj Patel yesterday saying that a fair value on pound was about a 135, which means right now we're a little bit undervalued. Pivoting over to your world, do you feel that UK equities as well are a little bit undervalued? Um, I'm not sure I would say that. I mean, I, I think they are maybe a little bit below, if anything, but I, I wouldn't. I don't get the sense that equities anywhere are undervalued. Um, I mean, the good news, I suppose, if there is any good news, a silver lining from Brexit is if, if sterling were to correct very sharply, just as happened in 2016, we would start to see, you know, equities rally again quite, quite sharply. But I think the problem that the UK equity market faces is that because, well, certainly 70% or thereabouts of, uh, of earnings on the FTSE 100 are generated internationally, um, given the, the global slowdown, there are a lot of headwinds, I think, mounting for UK equity markets just as they're mounting everywhere else. Frederick, we're also waiting some comments as well from the BOE this week. And I wonder, with some of the pound weakness, I guess you can argue that you're importing inflation. Does that help the BOE and Mark Carney that you're getting no more disinflation in the UK and really looking at inflation at 2%? Uh, to be honest, inflation is a non-issue at the moment for the Bank of England. It's coming down on the headline measure at least. Core inflation has been in check as well. Uh, wage growth still decent and by the way this is another thing that the Bank of England will have to comment uh, later on on the, the surprising trends of the uh, job markets in the UK but overall that's not the main issue we'll have to wait uh, and see what happens with Brexit and uh, in terms of the longer term supply side economics in particular the picture isn't changed for the uh, Bank of England.